Hey everyone, my name is Kim and welcome to the very first video on my YouTube channel. In my first video, I'll be talking about the hot topic of the season, and that's COVID. I've been in hospital pharmacy for more than three years now, so I thought it would be a great first video to share my experiences as a hospital pharmacist pre-COVID and during COVID, and basically what's changed. I started out on Instagram doing Insta videos, and I even have a blog creating content that I feel might be helpful to others. So I thought, why not take it to the next step and putting my stuff on YouTube so I can share it to a wider audience. I've been inspired by the people around me to join YouTube because they're already on YouTube sharing their content. Before we begin, I would really appreciate an early thumbs up and to show your support, please click the subscribe button below so you'll be the first to know when a new video gets uploaded on my channel. A lot of people don't actually know what hospital pharmacists do and most people actually think what we do on the wards is just supply medicines. But instead, that actually takes up 10-20% to of our day and the rest of the 80% we're actually doing something important. So in this video, I'll be talking about that 80% that we've been doing that nobody knows about. What I do on a daily basis as a hospital pharmacist is screen drug charts and that involves being able to pick up any drug interactions and make clinical interventions. We are actually known as the experts of medicines. It doesn't mean that we're a walking dictionary of medicines, but what it actually means is that we as pharmacists are able to pick up the doses that are incorrect so that it can bring the most benefit to the patient. On a day-to-day -day basis, as a clinical pharmacist, it's also important to be able to pick up any irregularities in blood markers, electrolyte levels, liver function or renal function because that's going to affect the medicines that are prescribed. And in that sense, screening drug charts also involve being able to use the correct guidelines, so knowing what current national guidelines are in place or even current hospital guidelines so that we're able to advise doctors to prescribe the treatments correctly. So taking all of that and putting that into the context of COVID, at the start of COVID, we didn't actually have any set guidelines. All we knew was the treatments that were already available to treat current conditions and see how they would fit into the COVID symptoms. It was no fun being in a pandemic, but it was actually a really interesting time being a pharmacist. Because at the start of it all, having no set guidances, we as pharmacists were able to help screen and make sure prescriptions were as safe as possible. And yeah, we were doing this pre-COVID, but during COVID, it just helps guide the junior doctors and the medical team and also junior pharmacists so that we're all in this together. Now more than a year into COVID, we've learned so much about the virus and the treatments that are available to help patients. Our role is to spread the awareness of the treatments that are currently in place and we're still currently learning from clinical trials and anything that's going to be effective to fight this pandemic. That leads on to my second point on how we as pharmacists need to put in time, dedication and effort for continuous learning. What I find that helps me is when I hit a wall at work, when something is prescribed and I don't actually know what it's for, or if I don't even know the guidances that are available, I try and ask other colleagues at work so then I can try and tackle that issue there and then. And we as pharmacists don't actually need to know everything. We just need to know where to look for the information using the appropriate resources, national guidances, local guidances, and sometimes if it's unlicensed treatments, is knowing where to look for the information and making sure that medicines are used as safest as possible. Pre-COVID, whenever I was rotating into a different specialty, I would read up on the common conditions and treatments that we use in that specific rotation. But it's also important to understand that sometimes medicines will be used for unlicensed indications. Pharmaceutical companies usually apply for licensings for their medicines that they've produced for specific indications. When you use medicines in an unlicensed way, it just means that we're using the medicines in the way that it's not supposed to be used for. And sometimes that's just because the current medications that are licensed for that specific indications are not working. And that's why we are resorting to use medicines in an unlicensed way. So when I talk about constant learning, it's not just about reading current guidelines and treatments that are in place. It's also being able to use our critical appraisal skills, knowing how to pick up relevant information from clinical trial papers and apply that to current practice. So yeah, putting that into the COVID aspect, remembering that we didn't have a lot of guidelines in place at the start of COVID, 
We as pharmacists had to read clinical trial papers just to see what worked for patients. In those cases, as I said, we've learned and experienced so much down the line. Now we have produced guidelines that are in place to help us help patients in this pandemic. The learning really never stops for pharmacists or anyone in healthcare for that matter because there's always new medicines and new technology coming up that is changing our ways of treating patients. Especially in this COVID situation, we need to know and keep up to date with the current treatments that are available just in case of a new drug deemed superior to another drug that's going to help COVID patients. And the reason that there's a lot of pressure on us as pharmacists is also because we're dealing with human lives. We might not have the role of a doctor or nurse dealing directly with a patient, but we are the final line in which we see medicines before they are administered. That pretty much sums up what I do on a daily basis as a hospital pharmacist, but bearing in mind that is just a major part of my day. There's also other aspects that I haven't mentioned in this video about what we do as pharmacists, and that's things like writing guidelines, doing audits, running clinics if you're independent prescribers, and there's so much more in this pharmacy profession that not a lot of people know about. So I'm hoping that after you've watched this video, you have gained an awareness of what we do as hospital pharmacists. If you found this video helpful, do click the like button below and leave a comment in the section below telling me whether you think this video was relevant to hospital pharmacy. Thanks everyone for staying to the end and I will see you in the next video. Bye!